So far, we have determined that the following function of x and t constitutes a valid wave function. It satisfies the Schrödinger equation, as well as the initial and boundary conditions. Observe now that the first term in the exponent is real, while the other three are purely imaginary. This enables us to rewrite the wave function as the product of the amplitude c, the real exponential, and the complex exponential function. Here, phi is a real function of x and t, serving as the wave function's phase. Now, by taking the modulus of the wave function and squaring it, the phase factor disappears, leaving us with a much simpler expression. In fact, the squared modulus of the wave function appears to be a simple Gaussian packet centered at the point where we would expect to find the classical particle at time t. This provides us with the following intuitive picture for the time evolution of the squared modulus of the wave function. It corresponds to a fixed-shape Gaussian packet traveling alongside the classical particle. As we will see further in this course, such simplicity is often the exception rather than the rule. Wave functions usually do not maintain their shape and don't adhere to classical trajectories. Those that do so are rare exceptions. We have just examined one such exception, known as a coherent state of the simple harmonic oscillator. Let's wrap up our discussion of this example by drawing a little cartoon visualizing the coherent state. Let's say at time t1 the spring is compressed, and the particle is instantaneously at rest. The squared modulus of psi forms a packet that sits on top of the particle. As time progresses, first at instant t2 and then t3, the spring extends, causing the particle to move to the right. The coherent state wave packet follows the particle without any distortions.